Holy Wire Mod here, and this is going to be tutorial 21 in the Expression 2 series, where we're going to be taking a look at a built-in ranger. So let's get rid of everything except for persist, and we're going to define int list, which is going to be an array, and then we're going to have ranger of type ranger data. So right here, we're going to be setting up an if first or dupes, or dupes not dupes, statement, and this is where we're going to be setting some initial conditions. So let's first look at the concept of flags. So we have ranger flags right here, which represent characteristics of the ranger itself. So is the ranger going to be permitted to hit water? Will it be permitted to hit entities? Can it ignore the world? Will the default value be set to zero instead of the maximum range? These are flags which should be considered with ranger. So the default one that's on is going to be E, which represents this flag right here called ranger hit entities and that's default one so if i were to put zero it's not going to say anything in chat now because i just turned the flag off so as you can see it's represented by this e here now if i want to hit water i would then put hit water and set that to one and that's represented by lowercase w in chat as you can see next to the e so likewise we can ignore the world and we do that as such and that's represented by lowercase i so now the chip will ignore the world and not consider it when dealing with ranger and also we can set the default output to zero instead of the maximum range whenever the ranger is not being hit or nothing is uh, crossing its path of detection and that's represented by lowercase z so we can also shorthand this we can say ranger flags and we put a string in here and we can put those lowercase letters in accordance to what flags we want to trigger. So if we want to hit water and ignore world and default zero, we put WIZ in no particular order either. We can put ZWI, it worked just the same. However, for the instances of this tutorial, we're going to hit entities, not ignore water, world doesn't matter, or water doesn't matter really, and we're going to have zero as the default output. All right. So otherwise, if you want to reset the flags to the default value, for whatever reason, you can just do that. And now it's back to E, despite all these changes, if you remember the order of events that's going on. And likewise, another way to reset it, but it won't work in this example immediately, is to use Ranger Persist 1, which resets every tick caused by the Ranger and Ranger offset commands. So we'll begin to that into a second. But first, before we do, let's uh, comment this out so it doesn't affect it. We're going to be setting some filters. All right, so we noticed we defined int list above, and this is going to be an array of the entities or types of entities that we're going to be filtering. So we're going to be filtering owner, and we're going to be t uh, filtering entity. And that's going to be the expression to chip itself. So here we can then set up the filter by saying ranger filter and we can either put an individual entity like this or we can just put the array right here which is why it's defined as such now for the purposes of this tutorial we're going to have to run on tick and set up a hologram so we're going to just create it right here in the if first or dupe statement now let's get into the ranger itself this is the ranger and which is going to store the ranger data and all that stuff so we're going to have ranger offset which is the easier method of using instead of ranger i recommend this and we're going to have first the maximum distance which i'm going to set to 1000 units and then we're going to have the position of the ranger which is going to be the expression to chips position and then lastly we're going to have the direction the ranger is facing which is going to be the forward direction of the expression to chip Okay, now we can set up the hollow position, and that's going to be at the end of the ranger beam, at the end of the hit. So that's represented by position right here, and that's different than this version of the command. So keep that in mind when using it. I'm going to get into an example of the other version in just a second. So first, let's look at this, and now we have a hollow at the end of the beam. I'm going to take the expression to chip as you can see if as I move it around the end of the ranger is also moving as well 
So if I jump in front of it, the beam gets hit and so on. It's not that it's considering me because I'm being filtered out from the data, but it is recognizing that I'm hitting the beam. So anyway, let us then set a condition for when something hits the beam. So you can do that by saying, okay, so if something hits this beam and you can set up other conditions or other checks, we, we can say that if it's not the world, so we'll say if not hit world, or you can say sky as well, if you want to consider the sky box, but uh, we're not going to be doing that in this tutorial, so I'm just going to put world. So you can say, okay, so if it hits and whatever it hits is not the world, then we're going to print some information about whatever we just hit. So we can say that the ranger's distance will be output in chat. Okay? So let's just do that. Something simple. Okay, so now it is hitting me. Well, it's not considering me the owner for the chip for some reason, but anyway. For the sake of this tutorial, the distance is increasing, decreasing accordingly. And now it's outputting a zero because that's the default value. Because remember, it, it's the ignoring the world with this hit. So anyway, um, now we can then say what we are hitting. So let's say we're going to hit, and then we're going to say ranger, and we'll say entity and we'll put that to string format and just for the heck of it we're also going to show you the other variant of position so we'll say ranger and pos so now it displays that it's hitting me player then it says my name and now it says my position on the map so seeing how I'm moving in one axis this val this middle value right here is updating and changing oops if i can uh actually get to stop there we go so now we have the middle value updating and changing all right so we can get some additional information which is kind of interesting I'm just going to put that in a new print command like for example we can get the material type of whatever we're hitting which is pretty useful if you want to make some kind of detection system based on that or we can say what group or what part of the body that we're hitting so I getting hit in the right arm and it's composed of the material flesh so anyway that's some interesting stuff you can do with the built-in ranger um, if you have any more questions or comments feel free to leave some in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video